two, one. Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Monday, June 13th, 2022. In accordance with board policy 8311, the chair of a committee at their discretion and after consultation with the staff liaison may convene an in-person committee meeting. Otherwise, all committee meetings will be held electronically. Today's meeting is being held virtually and broadcast through Microsoft Teams. In order to conduct this meeting efficiently, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board committee members will say their names before making and seconding a motion, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Fayer, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Good afternoon. Uh, Ms. Molly Jose? Present. Mr. Rodney McMillian? Present. Ms. Julie Hen? Present. Mr. Russell Kuhn? I'm here. Mr. John Offerman? Present. Are there any additional board members present that were not mentioned? Please state your name. Uh, hi, uh, Christian Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fayer. Please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Uh, thank you. Uh, Dr. Daryl Williams, Superintendent. Dr. Miriam Yarrow, Deputy Superintendent. Ms. Shira Anderson. Present. Ms. Mary Boswell McComas. Doctor, present. sorry, doctor. You know her, present. Ms. Mildred Charlie Green. Dr. Michael Zarchin. Present. Mr. Chris J. Hartlove. Present. Mr. Pedro Augusto. Present. Ms. Margaret Ann Howie. Ms. Maria Lowry. Present. Dr. Jeffrey Holmes. Mr. I'm sorry. Pradeep. I'm sorry, present. Thank you. Mr. Pradeep Dissett. Present. Dr. Douglas Elmendorf. Present. Ms. Kimberly Ferguson. Present. Ms. Bashira James. Ms. April Lewis. Present. Ms. Megan Shea. Present. Dr. Melissa Wissett. Present. Ms. Elizabeth Becker. Present. Uh, Ms. Jamie Hetzler. Present. Mr. Merrill Plate. Present. Ms. Michelle Sansbury. Present. Ms. Melanie Webster. Present. Ms. Joanne English Calver. Present. Ms. Deborah Somerville. Present. Ms. Catherine Pierandozzi. Present. Is there are additional staff participating that were not mentioned. Please state your name. Dr. Jess Grimm, Transportation. Thank you. George Sarris, Human Resources. Jennifer Kraft, Office of English Language Arts. Kanye Bailey, Department of Special Education. And Laura Lowe, Human Resources.
I'm so sorry. Oh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Ms. Bayer. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody again. Mr. Hartlow, please state your name for the record and proceed with contra uh, contract one. Yes, uh, my name is Chris Hartlow and um, uh, good afternoon, committee members, and I will go to contract one. Uh, JBO-714-22 Occupational Physical and Speech Language Therapist and other related special education services. This is a newly competitive bid contract for occupational physical and speech language therapist and other related special education services for the Department of Special Education. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with 23 recommended bidders and contract spending authority of $21,850,000. The academic content of this contract was discussed and approved at the Curriculum Committee on May 19, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Um, committee members, do you have any questions? Yes, Ms. Joes, I have one. This is Ms. Hen. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Um, does this contract include services for students requiring them in the VLP? I noticed that some of the recommended um, providers are out of state. Does this include remote services? Dr. Pierandozzi, will you respond? Absolutely. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Ms. Hen, yes, it does. It, it does apply for all related services for all students with IEPs and service plans. Great. Thank you. You are That's welcome. Good. Thank you, Ms. Joes. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any more questions? Mr. Thomas, do you have any questions? No questions. I just want to state that I believe this is something that the curriculum committee um, uh, approved in our meeting. So I'm super excited for this and I'm hoping that we'll get a favorable report from the contracts committee. Thank you. Um, I have a quick question. Um, it says the prior fiscal year actual was 3.5 million. Is that money we've already spent on this contract? Um, yes, it, yes, it is. This, it, not this contract. It was the previous contract for these items. Am I correct on that, Ms. Uh, um, Ms. Webster? That is correct. The The amount spent this fiscal year and the prior fiscal year were on the previous contract, which is mentioned down in the contract being replaced section. OK. Thank you. Um, hearing no more questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Sure. Uh, CWA-118-22 Elementary English Language Arts Curriculum. This is a new contract for elementary English language arts curriculum for the Office of English Language Arts. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $10 million. And this is another item that was um, was discussed at the curriculum committee on May 19th, 2022. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Mr. Offerman, you have a question? Yes. Uh, wait, excuse me. Where is this? Where is this currently being used? Thank you, Mr. Offerman. So I'm going to invite Ms. Shea uh, to respond. Yes, good afternoon. Thank you for the question, Mr. Offerman. Um, if I may clarify, do you mean which of our schools are currently piloting it or do you are you asking about what other districts are currently using the series? Or both? Other districts. OK, great. Um, so we do have um, data from other districts um, in other states. Let me um, pull that up really quickly for you. Um, we have. Um, and certainly um, I would invite Ms. Kraft can chime in, but uh, we have a graphic from, um, let me pull up the 
Lakita. And as you're pointing out, Ms. Shea, I'm going to go ahead and say these are not Please. the only districts using um, them, but these were ones that had um, state testing that we could look at measurable results. So they have a 2019. Of course, most school districts did not test in 2020, and then they um, were included in state testing in 21. Um, but it's used um, really across the country in many districts, but we were able to um, actually work with the company and um, narrow in on some districts that were able to show um, what their results looked like prior to using my view and then what they look like um, in the 20 end of the 2021 school year. So that's what Ms. Shea is about to talk about. Yes, so thank you for that um, time. We have Georgia, a district in a school district in Georgia, Massachusetts, Louisiana, North Carolina, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Texas, and Idaho. And I'm assuming I'm assuming that uh, that all these show uh, very very positive results. Is that correct? Well, so they all do show growth, which I would say is positive, particularly in the 2021 school year. So we're looking at the version of the curriculum that was published in 2020. So the only school year that we have is one that was, of course, significantly disrupted. Um, and all the district I just referenced did have growth. Um, so I would say yes, positive, ranging from North Carolina had the smallest growth of 1%. Yeah. Um, several districts had over 7% growth, and then Pennsylvania and Idaho had 12.5% and 13.7% growth, respectively. Um, and given, again, that it was during that year that was so significantly disrupted and represented a blend of remote and face-to-face -face learning, uh, we feel it's very positive. In addition, of course, to the state and national ratings from Ed Reports and other state ratings, giving it the highest rating as well. Thank you. Sure. Um, any more questions? It looks like Mr. Thomas, you got a comment? Yeah, Mr. Kuhn had a question. Yeah, let Mr. Kuhn go since he's in the committee. Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, I see that the spending authority is for $2 million over five years. Is that is that broken out evenly over the entire time? No, typically we see in the first year of implementation, we purchase, um, and I know you're a big fan of textbooks, Mr. Kuhn. So typically the first year is the largest proportion because we purchase the teacher materials for every classroom, as well as the print materials. And then there's an ongoing cost for the access to digital and then replenishing just the consumables um, for students so that they have access to it every year. So it's not perfectly even. We usually see a larger percentage in year one because that's when we purchase all the teacher kits. OK, um, just a quick follow on. So sure. it sounds like a lot of material teacher kits. It sounds like there's a lot of teacher training that's going to be necessary. Yes, um, so how is is that structured? Is that part of this $10 million? It is included. Go ahead, Ms. Kraft. Yeah, so a great question and such an important question um, because we know that with um, professional development that you really can start to see correlations in student achievement. So over the course of five years, if this contract were to move forward, we have actually 1500 hours of professional development where, and a little bit like Ms. Shea just said, so mo a lot of the professional, it won't be even Steven, so it won't be like 300 hours a year because in that first year, we really want to set everybody up for success success. So uh, more of our hours will use it, be used in year one, but in years two to five, uh, we will continue to have hours. And so that when we look at that bundle price of what we're paying for the teacher materials, the student materials, it's also including that um, job embedded professional development for our teachers, not just in year one, but in every year for the five years of the contract. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions, committee members? Hearing none, Mr. Thomas, go ahead with your comment. Thank you, and this is kind of the entire reason I'm here with this committee tonight. Um, I really wanted to speak to this. There are, are kind of a few musts with this contract. One, that Comar is requiring that all of our school systems move to an evidence-based curriculum. Uh, two, this is also required in order for us to receive full funding for a LEADS grant to move to an evidence-based curriculum. And uh, three, with our current curricular trends um, and seeing the, the growth in other school districts, I think this is really going to help us move away from what I've heard our current curriculum kind of being called as like a Frankenstein curriculum and to a really comprehensive curriculum that's going to be beneficial for all of our students. Now, I have 
a bunch of notes that I have written out that I wanted to share with you all from my visits at West Towson, at Honeygo, um, and also from speaking to our, our Mars Estates Elementary School uh, pilot team. Um, but I know that we're running short on time, so I might save those for tomorrow, uh, but I would love to share them with you all. And if anyone is interested, please uh, contact me and I can share them with you via phone call before tomorrow's meeting. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. You can share them at tomorrow's meeting. Ms. Hen, do you have a question? Yes, thanks, Ms. Jones, and I'll keep it brief. And thank you, Dr. McComas, for your answers to the questions that I submitted. Um, or I'm sorry, Ms. Shay. I'm looking right at you, Ms. Shea. Yeah, it's OK. It's a team here, so <laughs> we're a team. Sorry. Um, thank you for everyone that contributed to the responses. That was most helpful. Um, two part question. One does have to do with the Comar requirement, as Mr. Thomas brought up. Um, that change to Comar, I believe, was put in place several years ago, and I know that several districts are still using the Wonders curriculum. So I'm wondering if you could elaborate on the timing of the requirement. And given that our Wonders contract ends in, I believe it's October 23 what our requirement is and why now are we implementing um, this? Sure, sure. Uh, Dr. Over. McComas, is it okay if I start? Um, so um, you are correct that that change to Comar was first introduced in 2018 and then added in 2019. And at the time, you may also recall MSDE intended to do an audit of the BCPS curriculum because the Comar requirement is either have an independent highly rated one, as is the case here with Ed Reports, or have MSCE do the audit. And so they didn't put a hard and fast timeline within the language of Comar for the transition because they are um, identifying districts in um, a specific sequence for them to conduct that state audit if they're not able to identify a third party vendor. Um, so that's why there's not a hard date. However, every inclination from the state has to be that we're showing that good faith effort to move forward. Um, and part of that then also comes with the Leeds grant opportunity. So that was um, especially because we applied specifically under the strategy of the science of reading, which is so critically important for our training. The science of reading strategy strategy in the LEADS grant required that you had to meet all three focus areas, whereas some of the other strategies you could choose your strategy. And one of those strategies specifically says if a district is applying for the strategy of the science of reading, they must indicate that they either have in place a highly rated curriculum or have a specific plan to move to that higher um, curriculum. And then the third thing in terms of why now, I think, um, and you've been on this board for I think as long as I've been in my position, know that our data story has told us that we have an urgency to change. Um, and the Wonders contract that you referenced is actually a series of extensions that we have been able to implement. We actually adopted Wonders over nine years ago. Um, and so that was prior to even having such a rating system that we're talked about. Um, so we do have a collective sense of urgency around our student data, around the LEADS grant funding, around Comar, and really around the opportunity for our students. Thank you. And part B, I guess, of that question, and this is for Oh, Mr. I Hall. forgot you had two. Sorry. Sorry, I do have two. Um, part yep. B is on the finances. And Mr. Hartlove, can you speak to the expenditure um, piece of this for the remainder of the Wonders contract? Have we incurred the um, expenditures? Is that on an annual basis for Wonders? Or are those um, costs that we can avoid by um, implementing the My Way Now? They, I can, um, Mr. Hartlove, if you don't mind, we can as, seize the moment as a partner in the work. Um, Ms. Hen, we can avoid uh, those for next year if this is moved forward. And uh, Ms. Shea, if you have anything to add. Nope, you're exactly right. So we wind up um, uh, expending a significant amount of funds to continue to have access to digital. If we are to make this decision now prior to the school year, we would not incur those costs at all. OK, so we do have a an opt out in terms of our current contract for one where we would not include this. Great. And my um, last question has to do with the return of the Wonders um, physical textbooks to the warehouse. I understand schools were instructed to return those by the end of today, I believe. Um, um, schools no. are reporting that they were under direction to return their materials to the warehouse by the end of today. and. Um, which I was a bit taken aback by because should the board yeah. not approve this, yeah, that so our students without thank you for, books, and that was concerning. Yeah, yeah nope, thank nope. you, Ms. Hen, because that is not any directive that has come from me or my team, so I'm not sure where that misinformation. No, yeah. 
And in yeah. fact, we have four more days of school, so I certainly would never want any materials return, even though I'm hoping we have the contract. That absolutely did not come from yeah. our office. So that's inaccurate. Anyone who communicate that to you, please, you welcome to encourage them to reach out to us so that we can clarify. OK, so as a contingency, you know, should this not go forward, our students will still have materials. Is that an accurate statement? That is accurate. I would be remiss though if I didn't say that it would still require first the cost that you mentioned incurring, but also um, what Mr. Thomas referenced lovingly as our Frankenstein curriculum, we would still have to make changes um, to the curriculum. But yes, the students would still have wonders materials in the building. We would not collect anything prematurely. Great. Thank you. That's all I had. Thanks, yep. Ms. Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shea, Dr. McComas. Um, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Sure, um, LKO-415-18 pre-qualification of child care providers. Uh, the Concentration of Poverty Schools grant program will allow schools to provide for the full cost of child care or in some cases cover the difference between the cost of child care and any voucher uh, provided by the parent. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Um, I do have a question, Mr. Hartlove. Um, this has a list of pre-approved vendors and it's for $5.5 million. Uh, is this coming in? It doesn't look like it's coming through a grant. And uh, do we know that, what schools will be awarded this? That That is the, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. If you could explain a little bit more about what schools would be included because typically um, after and before school for most schools, parents pay for it and where is it subsidized and is it just for Title I schools or, or could you explain a little bit more about this contract? So Dr. Wistead and uh, Ms. Stansberry can help us. This is related to our a concentration of poverty grant um, serving our schools that have community school programs. So I'll turn it over to the team. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Sure, I mean, I can further say that um, there's a, uh, the specific schools that may be interested in using it uh, completed a needs assessment and came to an understanding that um, they, they needed this before and after school care. So it is completely funded through a grant. Um, and uh, the, the schools that are interested right now may not be an exhausted list, right? More schools as they come on as community schools may um, complete their needs assessment and realize that they are also interested in um, using this, the spending on this contract. So the schools have to apply for this before and after school care program? Can I, can I add on? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's actually the families would have to apply and meet a certain set of criteria in order to be approved to have their before and after care subsidized. And it doesn't mean that families still won't pay. They will be paying families, but then we're really looking at our families who have met a certain criteria at the school level. Um, and then as the schools continue to implement over time and receive additional funding through the blueprint, because this is all coming through blueprint funding, um, the number of available slots could potentially increase. So what you see is the total cost is the progression over time, um, considering the five year implementation of um, the blueprint community school grant. Okay, thank you. And what are we doing to reach out to parents? I don't think a lot of parents are aware of this, uh, especially our ELA learner parents, the, the parents that most definitely need this. How, what are we doing to make sure they're aware that there is such a program that would help them? So some of the schools currently through the Blueprint funding have the funding to support this effort, and some schools aren't there yet. It really is based on a school-based need. This isn't a need across all of the community schools, but in some of them. And we have community school facilitators who are working in partnership with other school staff to do specific outreach to families. When we look at trends around tardiness and absences and things of that sort and how we might be able to use the funding in that way. So as they continue to receive more funding, you will see this grow over time. We really don't have, um, a significant number of schools in the moment. There are probably about 
15, 12 to 15 schools who have the funding to support this. And then as the years progress, that number will increase drastically. OK, and, and just as a parent, I have never heard of this. So I, I do think we need to reach out to those parents that truly, truly need this, which will be a you know life changing um, opportunity for them. So I hope we do more in terms of reaching out to our parents that need this. Mr. Thomas, looks like you have a question. Yeah, I just again coming from the curriculum committee. This is so awesome being able to hear the presentation and now see the 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 other side of it. Um, but I just wanted to also state that there in some of our community schools, this could be entirely free depending on the concentration of poverty they have. It just depends on which of the community schools has a need. And one other thing, um, when I was at Logan Elementary School, I was talking to their community schools uh, community school coordinator. And the way that he's outreaching into the community, it's so great to see how our community school coordinators are getting out there. So Ms. Joes, I hope as we continue to expand, continue to fully get funding for the expansion of our community schools, that more of those coordinators will be able to get out to the community and spread the word about programs like this. I was almost in tears at the last meeting talking about my own mom and my family and how much this could have helped us. So um, I agree with everything you just said, and I, I think we'll be, we'll be moving towards that in the future. I'm saying we, but anyways, yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Thomas. Um, I don't see any more questions. Mr. Hartlow, if you could please proceed with the next contract. LLY-424-22 student mentoring, and this is another one that was discussed and approved by the cur uh, curriculum committee on May 19th. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, uh, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. MWE-816-18 evaluation services for the Magnet Schools Assistant Pro Assistance Program grant. And there's another one that was uh, uh, discussed and approved by the cur uh, Curriculum Committee on May 19th. Ms. Joes, which, which item is this? I have a different item on my agenda. Oh, this, this is, is item five. MWE 8-16-18 modification extension. My bad. Okay. Sorry, Did thank you. Did you have a question, Ms. Han? No, I don't. Thank you. Okay. Uh, committee members, any questions? Yes, Just Mr. A, Thomas. Yeah, quick question again. I'm sorry, I don't want to be, I don't mean to belabor this meeting. Um, this is for this contract. This is when we discussed the curriculum committee where we were talking about the the grant that is sunsetting and so continuing to provide funding for the. Yes, so this just extends the, the grant um, yes. so that we can complete the evaluation which is required by the grant. So this is funded by the grant to complete the requirement of evaluating the grant. Right, thank you so much and I'm super excited. Those are some of the schools we have, the, the IB schools, right? Our new IB middle schools as well. Okay, awesome, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Um, committee members, if there are no questions, we'll move forward. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting contract number six. Uh, LLY-422-22 Life Science slash Biology High School Textbook. It's another one that was at the Curriculum Committee. We were very productive last committee. <laughs> Committee members, any questions? Uh, let me see the chat. Mr. Kuhn, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I I did not go to the curriculum meeting, but I so I have a question about this. Is this because I know is this a new course? It says life science slash biology. I know we have biology books. Is this? Yes, yeah, so um, yeah. So thank you, Mr. Kuhn. Um, this is for the course you'll know as Living Systems, um, but we do have some students that take AP Biology to meet that requirement, which is why it was first um, posted with that title. So the Living Systems course is now the um, graduation required assessment for science in high school. There was a moment where it was going to be an integrated science assessment at the state, um, and they have since returned to Living Systems, um, which necessitates the need for us to have a resource to support the NGSS standards specifically for living systems um, coursework. So it's not a new right. course, but yeah, it is updated you. to NGSS and we want to make sure we have the most current resource to support our students with that assessment. You missed a good meeting, Mr. Kuhn. <laughs> you know you I love your curriculum. Sounds <laughs> like it. 
<laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Thomas. Can you keep your question quick? Yes, of course. Sorry. Um, going back to the curriculum meeting, I should have reviewed for this. This is the one that uh, we're also. This is, this is the only the physical copy of the textbook, not also there's not a virtual one, correct? The um, teachers have access to digital content to integrate because the students have the textbook. So this is physical textbooks, but teachers have some digital content that they can use to support instruction. OK, thank you. You got it. Ms. Joes. Yes, go ahead, Ms. Hen. In the interest of time, I'd like to make the motion to move items B1 and B3 through B40 to the full board with recommendation. B1 and B3 through 40. So we're going to do the work of the committee on the board. I'm it's the motion on the floor if there is a second. Is there a second for that motion? Hearing I'll no second. second. It. I'll second it. Um, so can you state your motion on in the chat, Ms. Hen? Sure. I move that the committee move items B1 and B3 through B40 to the full board with recommendation for approval. So Ms. Hen, let me get this clear. You're asking for this committee to just send contracts without reviewing them to the full board for approval. With yeah. recommendations? The committee should have done its pre work before the meeting and in the interest of time, I feel comfortable moving them forward to approval. It had a second and. OK, so Ms. Hen has a motion over. to move B1 to B3. B1 and B3, so you, what about B2? You... I would like to consider that separately, ma'am. B1 and B3 through B40 to the full board for approval. Um, seconded by Mr. Kuhn. Mr. Thomas, you got a question? Yeah, my, my question was about excluding B2. Well, can I make a motion or am I not allowed to because I'm not on the committee? No, you can't make a motion. You're not on the committee. OK, well, I think I mean, I. I, I always go back and watch the curriculum committee meetings to hear the presentations on all the items and the discussion before the meeting or I try to usually so. Um, if I, I guess this committee, if they feel comfortable moving them forward, then that's fine. I just think you should review them. But. OK, well, I'm not comfortable with just moving things without um, running to the committee, so I won't be supporting this motion. But Ms. Faya, um, are there any discussions, board members? Mr. Offerman, do you have any questions? No. Mr. McMillian? Don't know if he's there. Um, Ms. Faya, could you please take a roll call vote? Ms. Joseph, I may add a comment. If this if this motion is not approved, it cannot be reintroduced to approve these contracts with recommendation. By the committee. We can move them forward without recommendation, but it, it can't be moved forward with recommendation if this motion does not pass. OK, and then that means the board will just approve all of it, uh, which is fine if that's what you intend on doing. No, I'd like to move. I them. feel like I'm being rushed through something that is a committee work where other committees take and I usually do a pretty darn good job of moving these things within an hour. Um, but the fact that you're rushing through when other committees have reviewed it, I, I don't feel comfortable as somebody that does procurement and, and without reviewing to approve something to the full committee. I'd rather it not be just sent to the full board to do the work of the committee. Um, I am going to move that. Ms. Hen's motion be postponed, which precedes your motion. So I move Ms. Hen's motion be postponed. Is there a second? Second, Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Um, 
The motion is to postpone Ms. Hen's motion. Question. With that, Ms. Faye, could you take a roll call vote? Those in Question. favor? Yes, Question, Ms. Jones. Do we table it or do we postpone? Is it the same thing? Um, OK, I guess it doesn't, doesn't matter. I guess it doesn't yeah, matter. No, Never postpone. Mind. <laughs> um, actually, table means we will bring it back at the end of the committee uh, meeting. Postpone means it's just out. Um, so I, I'm going to move to table Ms. Hen's motion. Do I have a second? Second, Offerman. Thank you. Comment or question? Sure. Then it can't be reintroduced, and I want to approve these because they're they're worthy of approval. We need to move these forward, and the construction packages, particularly, are straightforward. The ones we've discussed, there have been no concerns raised, so. Ms. Hen, I'm tabling it, so it would be back at the end. Ms. Joes, so in the. You don't I, have to. I will withdraw my motion so that these contracts can be moved forward. However, because they need recommendation from the committee. So I will withdraw my motion if Mr. Kuhn withdraws his second. Mr. Kuhn, do you withdraw? Sure, your I'll second? withdraw it. Okay, Let's Mr. Hoffman, do you withdraw your second to my tabling? Yes. All right, thank you. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. OK, we're on number seven, MWE-804-22 Contact Tracing Services. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed to the I'm next. I'm sorry, Ms. Jose. I did have one okay. question about this. Go ahead. Um, it says the end date is 6-30-22, and that's in a few days. So why are we adding $2.25 million to a contract that ends in, in about a half a month? My uh, understanding with this one is, is, the, is we've been working with the vendor to uh, be invoiced, and uh, it's taken them a long time time to get us uh, an accurate invoice so we 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 had a ballpark of what, what the cost was going to be but we did not have the uh, uh, exact cost so we couldn't bring this item forward um, we did after much much uh, work we did finally get them to send us an invoice and then we produced the um, um, we produced the uh, contract uh, the modification to the contract so it's really just we we, we had to work with the uh, with the vendor to get the uh, up to date information, but you're correct. We are uh, at this point. We're pretty much um, wrapped up. Wrapped okay. up. Okay. Thank you. Miss Hen, do you have a question? No, I don't. All right. Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next question. Number eight. I'm eight, sorry. Eight. Next contract. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, uh, number eight is ASI-820-22 Technology Solutions Products and Services. Thank you, Mr. Hartlow. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Number nine, JBO-705-21 Security Officer Services. Thank you. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Thomas, um, can you please keep it quick? Yes, yes. So I know that at a few board meetings ago, Mr. or Dr. Williams introduced and explain the pilot for the school safety assistance program. And I'm wondering, does this contract have anything to do with the school safety assistance uh, pilot that's going on right now and the full implementation next year? Or is this separate from the school safety uh, pilot initiative? Uh, this is separate. This is, I mean, they're they're trying to accomplish similar things, but it's right. a separate initiative, yes. Okay. Um, so what is the difference between this one and 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 this this security officer? Oh, uh, Miss uh, 
Ms. Webster, if you could uh, uh, jump on, or uh, looks like. Uh, Ms. Lewis yeah. is here. She. Ms. She Lewis, be yes. Thank you. Better position to. Yes, good afternoon. So this funding is for the pilot. There will be different funding for the full implementation next year. OK, so this is the pilot full implementation. Yeah. And I know the pilot is already underway yes. in some schools. So what funding is current? How are they for currently being? So there was funding under the security contracts, but by okay. implementing the um, pilot, we would extend beyond what was allocated and would not have money for the future security um, officer services. OK, thank you so much. And I'm, I actually got to meet one of the uh, school safety assistants and and I think it was Franklin High School, and I'm super excited to see their work continue and expand. And I'm super proud of our superintendent for that work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, committee members, if there are no further questions, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Uh, contract 10 ASI-813-22 Helmet and Equipment Reconditioning, which is an annual thing that we do for, with all of our equipment. Thank you. And is that an annual expenditure, Mr. Hartlow, $500,000 for conditioning, or is that spread out? This is a four-year contract. Okay. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Number 11, KSH-359-18, Excess Workers' Compensation Insurance. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Uh, Mr. Hartlow, could you explain what, what this means, excess uh, workers' comp insurance? Is this on top of what we already have? Yes, that's the uh, my understanding of this. Yes, it's it's over, over and above what we currently currently have for workers' compensation. And this is over two, $2 million. Um, is that something that's, it sounds a bit it, unreasonable for me, but if somebody could explain. It's it's actually a modification. The current um, spending authority was $2,385,732, and this increases it by $300,000. Okay. Committee members, any more questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. JBO-716-22 substitutes and other temporary personnel, including virtual classrooms and offices. And this one, just you, just for backup, this is the Kelly uh, services um, item that was in our budget. All right, committee members, any questions? Mr. Thomas, is that question from previously? Uh, yeah, it was, but I actually was going to type something. Um, Go ahead, Mr. Thomas. Thank if you. if thank the committee you. does not have any more questions. Does the committee have any more questions? OK, if not, all right. Um, I was wondering, did this come to the contract committee, the curriculum committee, because? No. no, this is not a curriculum item. This is a this is a way for us to improve our substitute staffing efforts. OK, by well, using, I, yep. I'm, well, I'm super excited about this and it says including virtual classrooms and offices and with that, I know that our um, virtual learning program is kind of, I guess, sunsetting as we move forward. We're not uh, allowing any new students to come in. Um, so for those in, for the temporary personnel that we have in the virtual classrooms, uh, would there be opportunities for them to go into the physical classrooms as well um, through this contract? Uh, Ms. Anderson's here. That, 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 that is correct, but Ms. Anderson's here. She can certainly uh, fill in additional yeah. information. Mr. Thomas, thank you for that question. Yes, these individuals would have the opportunity of transitioning um, into our brick and mortar schools. OK, and would some of the opportunities be granted as well if they're to go from could they do like both? Like, could they do one with their substitutes one day in a virtual classroom, the next day in a, uh, you know, in a physical boarding building? Yes, they would have that opportunity. We use our subs in any manner in which is needed across the system. Um, so they could very realistically toggle between our brick and mortar as well as our VIP program if there's a need. Okay, well, this is very exciting to hear, um, especially considering during some of my school visits, uh, students tell me about all the students gathering in the gymnasium at times because of uh, 
you know, lack of, of, of staffing and that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited about this and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Um, contract 13 MBU-502-20 E-Rate Consulting Services. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? There being no further questions, we will proceed to the next contract. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed. JMI-618-18 Information Technology Staffing Services. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with the next contract. Oh, it's okay. Never mind. Oh, yeah, we moved on. Sorry. It's Go okay. ahead, Mr. Um, Hartlow. Um, Number 15 is LLY-428-22 Cellular 4G, 5G Wireless Product Services and Applications. Thank you. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing, Mr. Thomas, do you have a quick question? Go ahead. Uh, no, it was on the last one. Sorry. All right. Thank you. Mr. Hartlow, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Mr. J, this is number 16, JBO-718-22, Automatic Vehicle Location, location uh, System, AVL. Committee members, any questions? Mistress, I have a question. Go ahead. Not on the contract, um, just in terms of like procedure. So when you call for committee members that have questions, then should I say, should I raise my hand then or after that? Uh, typically, I would prefer the committee members ask questions before the board members since okay. uh, the committee will be approving it. So if there are no questions, I'll call on any board member present. OK, thank you. All right, thanks. Uh, Mr. Hartlow, please pre proceed with the next contract. OK, and I believe this is my last contract and we'll turn it over to Mr. Dixit. Um, this is contract number 17, JBO-704-22 Food Service Disposable Items. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Ms. Jost, I put it in the chat. Yeah, go ahead. Can you make it quick? Yes, yes. Uh, I, when I was reading this, I was just I was wondering after we just passed the environmental sustainability resolution on the Board of Education. I know we haven't updated any policies or anything, but I'm wondering, can you maybe speak to some of the um, the steps to try to make sure our disposable products are environmentally friendly? Um, I know that we have in some of our schools we have trays that are very environmentally friendly, but in other schools we have still those styrofoam trays. So I'm wondering if anyone could speak to some of that. I cannot, but I don't know if uh, um, Ms. Uh, I believe Ms. Hetzler is here and she can, or either that or uh, Ms. Calvert. Hi, it, it, uh, Joanne Calvert here. I'll, I'll speak for Jamie. Um, we no longer have styrofoam. Styrofoam is outlawed in the state of Maryland to be used in food service. We have not had styrofoam for probably three years now. Um, we push to get products that are environmentally friendly and can be recycled or composted. So um, the trays that we currently use can be composted. Um, and what you will see a push more towards paper products um, away from, unfortunately, we still have to use some plastic, but even our straws now are paper. So uh, we have really uh, going towards the more environmentally friendly products. Okay, thank you. And I know that there are five, um, five, sorry, I don't know the exact, what is the word again? Five vendors uh, listed at that on the contract. And uh, were those vendors specifically chosen because, you know, you said you look out for environmental sustainability. So can you speak to those vendors as to how they try to be environmentally sustainable in creating these products? Yes, one of the, so the, the vendors that provide them are not the, man, the vendors that necessarily manufacture them. Um, mm -hmm. But we did require all vendors who uh, submitted bids to submit to us um, their environmental practices. Um, so every one of them um, does practice um, and purchase from environmental friendly um, manufacturers. Wow, that is so incredible to hear. Okay, and then this. 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're, are you done with your questions? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next contract. Good afternoon. Next contract is CWA-102-22. It's for custodial cleaning and restroom product. Contract amount is $3 million and it's for five years. Your request, your approval is requested. Thank you. Uh, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Ms. Dixit, please proceed with presenting the next question. Item 17, contract CWA-102, no, dash 117-22 is for operable wall system. This is for inspection, preventive maintenance, repair, and or replacement as needed for operable wall systems. Uh, the amount is $650,000 and it's a 10 month contract. These wall systems are electrically operated and they require pre periodic maintenance. Uh, there are about 19 schools that are included in this contract. Any questions? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-123-22. It's for window blind installation. Amount is $1,500,000 and the term of the contract is five years. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is KSH 324-17 is for purchase of heating oil. There is no money requ uh, requested here. It is just extending the term of the contract by three months to give us more time for new solicitation. Got it. Um, Mr. Kuhn seems to have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Kuhn. Uh, thank you. Mr. Dixit, in the current um, in the current contract, are are the prices for fuel set or are they variable? Thank you for your question. It's really a good question. So um, when it comes to oil or other uh, energy commodity, uh, we board has approved a consultant for uh, our purchasing strategy, and there are two parts to the price. Uh, one is the oil itself. The second is the delivery. It's all included. So this contract mainly covers the delivery of that oil. Uh, the commodity itself is purchased uh, uh, partly through the uh, market mechanism and partly on a fixed price. So it's a combination of that. And there are 22 facilities that we have that utilize oil and there are several different government agencies that ride on this contract and Baltimore County is the lead uh, this time uh, for this bidding. OK, so what you're saying is this contract is specifically about delivery of said fuel. Well, it's it is for the purchase of heating oil which includes delivery. The delivery itself, there are two different types of delivery. So the, the commodity price is uh, handled by an independent consultant and their strategy. Part of it is dependent on the market condition, which uh, we purchase on market price, and part of it, it is fixed price. All right, the reason I ask is because fuel has spiked significantly I'm guessing that this is spiked also. And if we had a fixed price that was lower, it might make sense for us to order a large amount of it with whatever money we have left yeah. in this so contract. We, yeah, so, so that's, 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 what, that's what my question's about, but it doesn't seem as if that's tied to what we're talking about. So that's a good question. And I want to emphasize that part of the price is fixed because we already purchased that commodity in advance. 
OK, thank you. Any more questions? Any more questions, committee members? Hearing none. Um, thank you, Mr. Dixon. Please proceed with presenting the next contract. So the next contract is MWE-826-21. This is for consent to the assignment, which is just changing the name of the company. No additional funds requested. The original vendor was School Dude, and they have changed their name uh, to Brightly Software. Committee members, any questions? Uh, Mr. Dixit, wasn't there a contract that came in recently with the school dudes changed notification? Is there is this another contract? This is the same contract. There is uh, the, the contract that you had approved earlier was in the name of school dude. Uh, this is for the name change to my knowledge. Uh, Ms. Webster is here. Maybe she has more knowledge about that. Uh, the last time this specific contract came to the board was uh, last March. So did we answer your question, Ms. Joes? Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. Dixit, could you please proceed with the next contract? The next contract is JMI 608-19, and that's for roofing repair services. This request is twofold. Number one, it's requesting addition of million dollar to the contract to take care of repairs, roof repairs. And number two is consent to assignment. One of the company has changed names from Simpson of, Simpson of Maryland Incorporated to Simpson Unlimited Incorporated. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is CWA-122-22, and this is for asbestos abatement and monitoring services and compliance with federal and state requirements, uh, and also includes miscellaneous hygiene services. It's a five-year contract with seven recommended bidders, and the total amount is $2 million. Thank you. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract, I'll give you a little bit of background information on that, is MBU 522-17, and that's for custodial contract cleaning services. As the board is aware, uh, we have several vacancies, and there is a more stringent need for providing sanitized facilities. So in order to meet that requirement, while we are trying to fill positions, uh, we are also adding contract. Board had approved a contract for $1.562 million earlier. We are adding the amount of $4 million, and that's the request for your approval. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. It looks like Mr. Kuhn has a question. Mr. Kuhn. Uh, Mr. Dixit, you're anticipating um, a significant increase in spending here. Is that is that accurate? That's accurate. And that increase in spending is due to higher number of vacancies that we are struggling to fill. So uh, HR and our team are trying hard to fill those vacancies. Uh, but in, if the services are still needed. So in the, in the meantime, while we are trying to fill vacancies, we use these contracts to ensure that kids have clean and sanitized place. All right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So the next contract is ASI-803-21 for on-call mechanical, electrical, and plumbing consulting services. Uh, this contract was already approved by the board. This is consent to assignment. One of the companies named Kybard Inc. Name has been changed to Bauman Consulting Group. 
there are no additional points requested. Thank you. Mr. Kuhn, is that a question from the last? Yeah, that was the last one. No question oh. on this one, thanks. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Dixon, could you please proceed with the next contract? The next contract is ASI-808-22. It is for construction of artificial turf fields. Uh, in the past, uh, we were getting Baltimore County government to construct artificial turf field. Uh, we are trying to do it ourselves now. This contract is for $6 million uh, with term for 11 months and uh, three year extension terms. Services will be procured under the Baltimore County government contract B1456. And uh, we anticipate building more turf fields over the next couple of year period. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Mr. Kuhn, you have a question? I do. Um, uh, Mr. Dixit, do you have, uh, these are all, I, I, I guess these are all high schools that you'll be replacing fields on? That's what I believe. I don't have the names, but I, knew that, I know that we are projecting uh, about six new artificial fields, artificial turf fields. Okay, and my question um, is just a follow on. Are you going to be doing the same thing regarding replacing tracks? Because I know that there are, are a number of tracks that are just in really poor condition, and I would hope to see that contract come forward also. So that's that's a good, good suggestion, and uh, absolutely, the answer is absolutely. We are going. We are in the process of uh, replacing a lot of new tracks because we got some additional funding for that in our capital improvement program. The only tracks that we are not replacing are those those capital projects that are soon to be uh, to have a replacement schools or renovation school, major renovation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. The next contract is LLY-426-22. This is for drainage improvement at Kearney Elementary School. Uh, we have been asked to uh, look at the ponding water situation around the modular building there and our team has determined that there's site work needed uh, to improve the drainage system. And this is the contract that's going to do that. Uh, so your approval is requested so that we can improve the drainage system at Kearney Elementary School. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Uh, Mr. Kuhn, do you have a question? I can't see there's too many chats. I, I don't, thanks. This is Ms. Hen, I do, Ms. Joes. Go ahead, Ms. Hen. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Dixit. Hi, how are you? Great, thanks. Um, I was excited to see this project come up. Um, will this improve the drainage issue at the corner of Joppa near the monument at Kearney Elementary, or is this completely unrelated to that? So this is around the modular building that was built in 1990, and that's where the ponding uh, was reported to us. Uh, and all of that water that ponds there, I know you are familiar with the school, that will be um, drained into the uh, in, into the storm drainage system around the bus loop. So this is kind of unrelated to what you are talking about, mm -hmm. uh, but this is a situation that needs to be taken care of. Okay, wishful thinking, I guess. Um, so it, it does not affect the, you know, the corner that I'm referring to. Yes, yes I do. I'm very much familiar with the school and the neighborhood there. So yeah. I'm not exactly. We can surely look into it and, and, and we'll get back to you. Okay. Even if um, it's not board property, but if there are any efficiencies that can be gained, if we need private funding, um, that the work could be completed at the same time. I don't know if that's the case or not. And um, we were able to obtain private funding for the same contractor to perform that work. I know that that's a big concern of the community to address that that other issue. Um, there could be an opportunity here with timing. So um, if that could be considered, that would be appreciated. 
Ms. Sure. Ken, I think um, that should go to the Department of Public Works um, that they would have to coordinate with. That's who would be uh, doing that drainage problem. Yeah, so uh, like Ms. Joes is saying, we don't know whether it's on our property or their property. And then each project about drainage, even though it appears simple at the surface, but it requires design, drawing, bidding and all of that. So I will definitely make a note of it and look into it and uh, and share with you what we find. OK, thank you. OK. So the next see any more questions on that before I proceed to the next one. Committee members, any questions? Hearing none, Mr. Dixit, please proceed with the next contract. So in the interest of time, this is about the Bedford Elementary School replacement project that board has already approved and has looked at the design. This is part of the capital program. So this is the 11 packages and I will quickly give you the name of the package, name of the contractor and the amount which includes contingency and then request your approval for all of those prime contracts. So 2A is site work. It amount is $9,249,020. Lowest bidder is Urban Zinc Contractor Inc. Uh, the next package is 2C, which is testing and inspection. Amount is $196,324. And the lowest bidder is Ruling Associates. Uh, the concrete package is 3A. Amount is million seven hundred eighty nine thousand seven hundred dollars. Lowest bidder is Saudi Concrete Construction Incorporated. Masonry package for A. Lowest bidder amount is two million six hundred eighty five thousand six hundred fifty dollars. K Ron is the K Ron Masonry of Maryland is the lowest bidder. A five A package is steel. Lowest bidder is uh, Kinsley Construction, five million three hundred fourteen thousand one hundred. A general trades package, six A. Uh, amount is six million one hundred fifty eight thousand one eighty, and the lowest bidder is Bronner Building Incorporated. Roofing package, seven C. Amount is four million one hundred seventy six thousand five ninety. Coal Roofing Incorporated is the lowest bidder. 8C is for openings, which is doors, windows and all of that. Lowest bidder is Glass Concepts Incorporated at $1,182,577. Package 9A is for gypsum walls and ceiling. The lowest bidder is Can Am Contractors Incorporated. Amount is three million three hundred forty eight. Oh, twenty seven. Mechanical package 15 a lowest bidder is GE Tignal and Company Incorporated. Eight million seven hundred thirty two thousand four hundred sixty dollar. And electrical package 16 a is five million seven hundred sixty four nine hundred thirteen dollars by grounded electrical construction. All of these contractors are pre-qualified and they, they have done work with us before. Most of these packages, with the exception of one, are multiple bids, so we received good response. And we are requesting that you approve all of these prime packages. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Committee members, any questions? I hope we still have a quorum. Um, um, hearing none, we will proceed to the next item of business. I the will next, go ahead. The next item is not a contract. ARA 206-22 is board's approval, request for board's approval for educational facility master plan and comprehensive maintenance plan that state requires annually. It's a compliance document. The contents, most of the contents have already been shared with the board in one form or the other. And they, the, they are required um, as required by the IAC. So the contents have been made aware 
to the board in some other documents already, and they are presented in the format that a state requires. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Um, committee members, any questions? Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank that you very much. Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to recommend that items 1 through 40 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, uh, Offerman. May we separate item 2, please? We'll separate out item two. Um, Time. I'll entertain a motion to recommend items one and three to 40 be moved to the full board for approval. So moved, Hen. Second Offerman. Thank you, Ms. Hen and Ms. Offerman. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faya, please call the roll. Ms. Han? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jose? Yes. That's five. There being five in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contracts one in three to 40 will be moved forward to the board. Uh, I will now entertain a motion to recommend that item contract two be moved to the full board for approval. So Is moved there... Offerman. Thank you, Mr. Offerman. Is there a second? Second, McMillian. Thank you, Mr. McMillian. Um, any questions, committee members? Hearing none. Those in favor, please say yes. Those opposed, please say no. Ms. Faya, please call the roll. Ms. Han? No. Mr. Kuhn? No. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Mr. Offerman? Yes. Ms. Jose? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Ms. Fayer. There being three in the affirmative, the motion passes. Contract two will be moved to the board for approval. The last item on the agenda is announcements. The next building and contracts committee will be held on Monday, June 3rd. That's not correct. It's July. Um, my script is wrong. July 13, 2022 at 5 p.m. Is there any further business? Hearing none, the meeting is now adjourned. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.